Big League Baseball starts here, and it starts small and tough, in hot and dusty ballparks, in towns and cities that run together in your mind over a summer of night bus rides and day sleeping and meals eaten at no particular time. What it can lead to is one of the American dreams which still comes true, sometimes, as we'll find out today as Discovery visits the Duluth Dukes, 23 young American ballplayers who've made it part way to the majors. Discovery 71, the award-winning program for young people with Bill Owen. Hi, and welcome to Discovery. That sign up there is a key to the reason we've come here, to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're on a road trip with a minor league baseball team, the Duluth Dukes, currently in first place in the Northern League. They are 23 highly trained experts who've come here to do very specific jobs once a day for three days and then leave under cover of darkness. If this were winter, these would be school teachers and college students, but it's still summer and they're professional baseball players on the road for the last time this season. And today is the last afternoon of this road trip or roadie as the players call it. For the moment, the team is split up doing what ball players on the road in small, unfamiliar cities do, which is basically not much of anything except rest and wait. Dan Rourke is a second baseman from Williamsburg, Iowa. Steve Zork is a relief pitcher from West Chicago, Illinois. Like their 21 teammates, they're contract players for the minor league system of the Chicago White Sox. And like the rest of the Duluth Dukes, they want to make it into the bigs which is what they call the major leagues, and they want it a lot. Normally, after the long bus ride, we usually rest before the game, but then after that night's game, the next day we go out and shop around and uh, just look at the different stores normally and visit, meet people. Otherwise, I don't mind the life on the road. It's not bad otherwise, if you get away from the bus trips, if you could just go to the city and play ball and forget about the bus trips. It, It'd be all right. Right now, these young athletes are playing small city baseball in uniforms second-handed to them by the parent team in Chicago. The uniforms say Sox instead of Dukes, and they're a little out at the knees. But this is today, and it's in the nature of minor league ball players to bet a just fair today on a great tomorrow. <laughs> The journey to the bigs is made most of the way on buses, in the case of the Dukes, with a driver who's loyal and diligent, and an air conditioner that isn't. Dan Rohr finished school at Upper Iowa College in Fayette, Iowa, and then he taught physical education to youngsters, grades one through eight, in Colfax, Iowa's elementary and junior high schools. At 22, almost 23, he's right on the edge of being a bit too old to break into the bigs. Winter ball, I'd be pretty good. When I started playing ball about I was seven or eight years old with my father. We'd you know, just go out in the backyard and play catch or something like this, and, and then this continued into Little League. He was the coach. This was in Williamsburg. It was a pretty good Little League system. It wasn't too big, six or seven teams, but most of the fathers did all the coaching and setting everything up, which made it all right for us. We really enjoyed it. Much of what happens to Dan Rourke and Steve Zork this summer while they're on the Dukes roster is in the hands of manager Joe Sparks. At the same time, much of Joe Sparks' future pivots on the results he gets with his 23 players, most of them rookies. This is his first year as a manager for the White Sox organization. In the past, he's been a player coach, and before that, for the New York Giants, an infielder through the top teams of their minor league system. 
He has put, to date, 14 years of his life into the game of baseball. Well, baseball is all I ever wanted to do. It's uh, been my life ever since I was a uh, nine, ten years old. Now I've uh, completed 13 years as a player, and I'm just happy that I can be a, a manager and pass on some of the things that I've learned uh, during these years to some of the young players coming up with, uh, with the White Sox. If you can have nine guys bearing down out on that field, then you, you're going to win a lot of ball games. And this is what I try to do. I try to instill this in the younger players, that which we do have here, of really going out and doing the job and not, not worrying about what will happen later, just going out each and every night and try to really bear down and give 100%. The most distinguishing feature of this particular game is that it's the last night of the season's last roadie. Sioux Falls is at the bottom of the Northern League six teams at the moment, and Duluth is at the top. A win tonight clinches the pennant, regardless of the outcome of the game being played by Duluth's closest competitor, the team from Aberdeen, South Dakota. Steve Zork is still a little this side of 20 years old, which in baseball is in his favor. He's had two years of college at St. Procopius College in Lyle, Illinois. And this year, instead of going back to school, he's decided to make his stand and try for the bigs. September will find him not in school, but playing winter ball in Sarasota, Florida. As a relief pitcher, Steve Zork must be ready to go in when the going gets rough, when the starting pitcher is wearing down, or when the batters on the other team are onto his throws. One thing a relief pitcher must have is the ability to warm up fast, and Zork has it. The Dukes have led all through the game, but when the Sioux Falls Packers start to rally in the eighth inning, manager Joe Sparks decides to put relief pitcher Steve Zork into the game. When I first come into the game, I notice Joe Sparks is on the mound, and Bruce is there, and the starter is there, too. The first one I look at is probably the starting pitcher, and I, I see what kind of a mood he's in. He's in a sad mood. He, wants, he probably is really hoping that I do a good job. And I look at Joe, and he'll say, OK, you're in a tough situation. We want strikes here. Maybe there's a man on second and third. He'll say, you got a base open. Don't worry about walking the guy. We'll get a double play. Throw strikes. The way I feel when I'm on the mound is you control the game an awful lot, what you throw, where you throw it. If you really concentrate, I try to concentrate awful hard when I'm throwing, especially in a tight game. The Dukes have tonight won their fourth Northern League pennant in the last 10 years. It's good for Joe Sparks because it speaks well of his first year as manager. It's good for the local baseball people because it gives them something to promote in terms of next year's gate receipts. It's good for the players because winning is good. Good for the spirit and useful as insulation against the bad times and the personally terrible days through which every ball player must pass. But with the pennant a matter for the record, the team must spend the rest of the season's games on the primary reason for the Duke's existence, the production of players skilled and seasoned enough to make it in the majors. We'll find out how they go about achieving that goal in just a minute. The team's hotel for the first and final night of every road trip has six wheels and 39 armrests. It isn't necessarily one of the aspects of their life in the minors that the Dukes will remember with fondness. But for a team with a freshly won pennant, the seats can seem a little softer and the road a little less rocky. Life on the road is 
is mixed up, really mixed up. You don't know when is day and when is night. You're up late, you sleep late. Your whole clock inside you is upside down. Your eating is erratic. You eat breakfast at two in the afternoon. You maybe take a snack before a game, eat after the game, you have a big dinner after the game, you go to sleep with a full stomach. It's not really good on yourself, but that's that's what you have to do. Oh, well, the life in the bigs would really be fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Well, I definitely think the traveling up there would be a lot more comfortable than it is now. Of course, you know, they fly the jets. I suppose they take buses or something from the airport to the motel, but everything's prearranged. And a bus ride up there isn't anything compared to a bus ride here. Down here, <laughs> travel 400 miles, seven hours, a few stops in the middle of the night. It wouldn't be the exact same trip as walking up on a big jet. By the time the bus pulls into the outskirts of Duluth, it'll be fully morning, and nine hours will have passed since the team, after playing 10 innings, piled into the bus for a somewhat restless night. But this is the end of the last roadie, and coming back, they brought victory with them. Home for five members of the team is this apartment, which is handed down season after season to a new generation of Dukes. This summer, among the five, is Dan Rourke. Steve Zork lives in an apartment he shares with pitcher Rusty Borg. Both of them, like nearly everyone else on the team, has a history of participation in Little League the coast-to-coast -coast association of baseball teams for players under 13. In a way, the Dukes are repaying their debt from their own years in Little League with a series of clinics held from time to time through the summer for the Little Leaguers of Duluth. A lot of the players, even in the uh, major leagues, you don't know how to bunt. And that's bad because you have to know how to bunt. When Dan and Steve and the others work with the Little Leaguers, what they're transmitting is a mixture of their fathers and every coach and manager they've ever had, right through Joe Sparks and his assistant, Bruce Andrew. Let him see it. Two hands. Good. All right. Real good. That's better. Stay low. Two hands. Good. All right. This guy. Quick hands now, all right? Give him a good throw. Two hands. Good, good throw. No way. Try drag. You can look at the plate. You can look there. Anything, as long as you stop. And then you want to balance. And when you balance, you're going to have your arm back here. And you're in a balanced position. And then if you want, you can come over. If you don't want to come over, if the runner's not far enough off, you can go home. But if you do go home, you have to remember, you're looking at home plate. And you go home. When you throw over there, one way to work with a player who has unavoidable built-in limitations is to diversify him, to add to his skills in every possible way. In the case of Dan Rourke, he'll do better by becoming a switch hitter, a batter who can hit right-handed or left-handed. This is Joe Sparks' intention with Dan. All right, serve that ball nice over there. Just serve it over there when it's outside. Good. Steve Zork has a good fastball and what baseball players call a live arm. But one good pitch isn't enough for the bigs. And if he's ever going to make it, he'll have to develop a good curveball. got under that ball it's a little bit you release it out of here instead of getting right on top of the ball and bringing the ball down into the strike zone you got the ball up here 
release the ball here, and that's the reason the ball was up My high. strength, the only strength I do have right now is that I have a good fastball. My weaknesses are uh, many, many which I can work on, but it's good. a personal thing. Pitching is quite personal in right the way you work on yourself and, and what you develop. You have to really work if you want to get in good pitches. Probably the, my greatest weakness is not having a curveball. There are 23 Duluth Dukes, and every one of them wants to make it to the bigs. At some point, every one of them was considered good enough because each was scouted, drafted, and signed. But the statistics of baseball tell a harder story. There are 24 major league clubs, and each of them has a minor league system of four or five teams like this one. Only about 5% of the players in the minors ever make it to the bigs. That's a fact with which every man in this field has to live every day. Coaching and problem solving can make the difference. And the results will show up where it matters, on the field, during the games themselves. We'll find out how in just a minute. There are 23 individuals in this room, only a few of whom knew each other before this brief summer season began. Now in their own white home uniforms, they're for a little while longer a team. In Chicago, on paper, their immediate fates will be decided in the next few weeks after these last few games are played and the results are evaluated. For some of them, these final games are one more chance to pull themselves out of a hitting slump that could prove fatal to their careers. They've won the Northern League pennant, but now each man has his own personal flag to win. The flag of his future, blowing one way or the other. During these last days of the season, the Dukes will confront two teams out of the five with which they share the Northern League. The action we'll be seeing will be against the Aberdeen Pheasants. This South Dakota team is a minor league club of the Baltimore Orioles and has one of the longest working agreements in the history of baseball. The Pheasants have been part of the Orioles system for 25 years. Zork is basically a relief pitcher. A few times each season, he starts his own ball game instead of taking over when somebody else is in trouble. This is one of those games. Joe Sparks works his pitchers on a five-man rotation system, as far as his starters are concerned, and works his relief men into the game as they're needed. Steve Zork has seen a lot of action during the Duke's 70-game summer schedule. Number I started Steve Zork today because we want to see what he can do in a starting role. He's mainly a relief pitcher, but we need starting pitchers in the big leagues, and Steve looks like it, he's going to be one of our big league pitchers in the future. And if he could come around and pick up a good breaking ball that we're looking for, uh, he could help our big league club in a few years. And He's trying real hard today, but uh, he's just not having any luck. I think the reason Steve's getting hit today is because he's not getting his slider over. Down in the bullpen, he was working on a curveball slider, and he was getting it over. He goes out on the mound, and uh, he don't get it over, and he has to use his fastball too much. Gets behind the hitters, and uh, they just hit the ball. Even though I'm probably going to have to take Steve out next inning, it's, it's a good experience for him. He may be later on in, with the White Sox will end up being a starter, and uh, he's going to have to learn to how to pace himself and just learn how to go out there and get the hitters out. Dan Rourke plays most of the time. He's fast and energetic, and he covers a great deal of the playing field. But just how often he has a chance to put into actual play the tools he and Joe Sparks have been working on is a matter of chance and the way the game goes. We're going to let Danny hit left-handed today and just see how he can do. He looks like he's going to be uh, be all right left-handed. 
that first ball he hit right there is just uh, he didn't wait for the ball long enough and uh, he just didn't hit it real well. Danny looks like he's not keeping his eye on the ball right now. He uh, is dragging the bat a little bit and not watching the ball and it's typical of a young hitter trying to learn to switch hit. For Steve Zork and Dan Rourke and the rest of the Dukes, it's the end of a work day. Three more days and the season will be over and they'll return to the other parts of their lives. Danny will go back to his students in Colfax and Steve will get himself ready for winter ball in Sarasota, Florida. When March comes, they'll probably be together again in Florida for spring training. For Dan and Steve and their teammates on the Duluth Dukes, this place, this stadium, is one base on the long run to the bigs. Some of them will make it, and some of them will be tagged out. The statistics are against most of the Dukes making it to the majors, but hope dies hard, and hope is one thing that ball players are made of. We'll be back in just a minute. If you've enjoyed Discovery's visit to minor league baseball with men who've made it part way to the bigs, ask your librarian for these books. Basic Baseball Strategy by S.H. Freeman, and How to Play Baseball by Robert Fitzsimmons. Be sure to be with us next week for another exciting program as Discovery continues to discover the world. Bye. This has been a Jules Power production in association with ABC News.